Hey guys, thanks for staying for the last part of my uh, video series for uh, nu nitrogen nucleophiles. Uh, this one's going to be about the mechanism for creating an enamine. I'm going to walk you guys through it, and I'm going to go a little bit faster because a lot of it's really similar to the uh, mechanism for creating a imine, which I went over in my last video. So yeah, in case you guys have any questions, just post them down below. I'll try and re reply to them as soon as I can. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. It, the reaction itself is very similar, the mechanism, sorry, is very similar to the amine one. So, like before, we're just going to activate our carbonyl, which is this carbon-oxygen double bond, in case you guys forgot. And, uh, yeah, we do this. And, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit woozy because I just came out of a three-hour lab, so excuse me if I'm a little brain-dead. But, uh, yeah, so you activate your carbonyl, and then you're going to get this product. And by the way, as I do this, I want you guys to do it with me on uh, paper or whatever it is you write on, but, and then always try to be one step ahead of me. Hey, all right, is there anything wrong with this uh, right here? You guys can probably guess there should, there should be a positive charge over here, right? And I'm going to go over that whole resonance explanation thing again, but it usually resonates, and then this is like the other form of your uh, carbonyl. It's, it's neutral up here, but instead you sacrifice the electrons that were at the carbon, and you brought it up, so the carbon now is positive, so you get a carbocation. It's very not stable, so it's more preferred to keep it in this form. So it won't resonate up very willingly, so we have to do something. Or like, another way of seeing it is like, the secondary amine sees this and takes this opportunity to attack the vulnerable carbon here, in either case. Because this carbon here is secretly positive. It's just re resonating really, fist really, really fast, fistfully <laughs> fast, so you can't really see it. But yeah, um, you target this carbon here, and then once you target this carbon here, carbon has four bonds already, but now when you attack, he's getting a fifth bond, so he throws away the, res the double bond and resonates it up. And then you're going to get this product over here. Um, it should be this. A nice neutral alcohol over here. And then I'm going to just shift the carbons uh, around a little bit. It's pointed like down now, just so we have room for our nitrogen, okay? All right, and then, yeah, is there anything wrong with this one here? I know these questions are getting really redundant, you guys already guessed what's the error, but yeah, there's a positive charge right here on the nitrogen, because nitrogen was neutral before, he had three bonds, but now he has four bonds, so he's positive. He also donated electrons to form that fourth bond, so that's why he's positive. And then how do we fix this? Oh yeah, I forgot that whole smiley face thing. So, we used up our catalyst, so we're sad. Because remember, in my first video I said that can never produce more catalysts at the end of your reaction, and you never lose any catalysts at the end of your reaction. So we lost it there, chances are we have to get it back, and uh, you guys probably already guessed, we get it back right now, because we're going to use our, we're going to use the chlorine minus ion that we created in this step here to basically target this nitrogen and deprotonate the nitrogen, take it, so this way his electrons are freed up and it goes through the, uh, the hydrogen's electrons are freed up and it goes through the nitrogen. So now, what you guys are going to get is basically this molecule. Alcohol is still there. Now you have a neutral nitrogen here. Alright? Nice and stable molecule. So you're a little bit stuck because we don't know how, where to go from here, right? We have to get to our enamine. And the key thing is, once you get stuck, your catalyst helps you out. So our goal is to get to an enamine where there's no oxygen on your molecule. So we have to kick this, kick this alcohol out, like in the imine mechanism. So how, how do we kick it out? We turn it into a better leading group by putting a charge on it. And how do we do that? We use our catalyst. You pronate the uh, oxygen, so this way it becomes... Let's see, you get... O, H, H. It's kind of like an H2O molecule. Positive charge, don't forget that. Um, I know this is looking really, really ugly. But uh, yeah, nitrogen, nitrogen, nitrogen. Where we go from here, it's... Uh, oh, I did something wrong. Nitrogen's directly connected to the carbon. There you go. Yeah, that's correct. All right, we can't just do this, because then if we just do that, we're going get, to get a carbocation in our carbon, so that's no good. Something has to motivate that move. And what that something is, is the lone pair on nitrogen. 
it resonates down to get to uh, well, you don't have any final product, but you resonate it down to kick out the oxygen in the form of water. Okay? And then what you get next is going to be this molecule over here. Alright? Alright, is something wrong here? Check everything, hit pause before I give you the answer. Positive charge, as always. So how are we going to fix this now, right? I have a positive charge, right? We don't have any more hydrogens to depronate and give electrons to nitrogen. So what we do is a simple E2 elimination uh, reaction. So E2 is always involving a beta carbon. So this is the alpha carbon because it's directly connected to the nitrogen. And the second carbon away is the beta carbon. So both of these guys are beta carbons. And they have hydrogens here that can be used for elimination. So your uh, Sorry, I'm doing a terrible job keeping track of my uh, sub uh, catalysts, but we got it back here, so smiley face. We used it up here, so sad face. And because I did that, you guys probably know how we're going to do the elimination. We're going to use our catalyst again. <laughs> but yeah, Cl- is going to target either one. It doesn't really matter because it's like it's symmetrical. So you target a, a beta hydrogen, and then you, you depronate the hydrogen, so the, the electrons in the bond are now freed up. So then it goes over here, right? Carbon already has four bonds. He doesn't want the fifth bond, so he resonates it back up to the nitrogen to fix the unstable nitrogen charge. And then you get your enamine product from there. Okay? Hopefully that wasn't too crazy for you guys. Oh, holy crap. But uh, yeah, um, the mechanism itself, it's, it's not too crazy. It's very repetitive. If you take a look at all of them, acetal, amine, enamine, it's really not that bad. Just try and um, notice the patterns and come up with like a story for the mechanisms like we did for the amine one. Let's come up for, for one with the uh, enamine now. So basically, you have to uh, destabilize your carbonyl, as always. Once it gets the positive charge, the secondary amine takes advantage of this opportunity to attack. It attacks the vulnerable secretly positive carbon right here. And then he gets himself attached onto the molecule. But because he's attacking, he's losing an electron to form the bond right here. So he becomes positive. You fixed all these charges with your um, catalysts, with your catalyst or whatever, um, here. And then you destabilize your alcohol to make it a better leaving group, like by turning into H2 a molecule with your catalyst again. And uh, yeah, eventually, you, you kick it out with the whole resonance of the nitrogen, and then you give the resonance or the double bond uh, the electrons back to the nitrogen through an elimination reaction, and there you go. So E2 reaction here to get your um, double bond right here, the mean. I know it's on this side, but don't worry, it's symmetrical, so if you just flip your molecule around, it'll look like this. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you also regenerate your catalyst here, so let's put a smiley face. And just to make sure we did everything right, this sad face cancels out this smiley face. So your catalysts, you didn't create any more catalysts, you didn't re remove, use up too many catalysts. This sad face cancels out this smiley face. You have a net of zero. So you didn't create more catalysts and you didn't use up uh, any extra catalysts. So you don't end up with any more and you don't end up with any less. There you go. <laughs> yeah, okay. So that's basically imines and enamines. Hopefully after this, after that video, you guys really see that it's not too bad. If you liked it, hit like, um, comments, suggestions, whatever. If it was helpful, whatnot. Post it down below. If you want to get updated when I upload when I upload new videos, hit subscribe and all that good stuff. All right, cool. See ya.